Hello everyone, I'm Daniel. I'm here with Superfang99. As usual, scenario number four of The Circle Undone is The Wages of Sin. It is a scenario in which we are in a graveyard for some reason. We'll talk about the beginning of this one. I, I'm always a little confused about what we're doing here after the, the secret name, but uh, let's take a look. Yeah, honestly, the story continuation from the previous scenario to this one is just like, well, we figured we might as well go here since uh, there's been some ghost sightings here, I guess. Sure. That is basically the story. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're, we're here and we're going to investigate some ghosts, uh, I guess. Um, the way this is going to be set up is that we're going to begin with a bunch of these locations in play. All of them are going to be the, um, face up, actually. And some of them have multiple versions of them. Um, so I'm going to just click this setup button for mm -hmm. it to choose this randomly, and we'll go through all the rest of the locations as well. Um, at this point in the beginning, uh, we're just trying to get some clues. And importantly, because it does say this at the end of the setup, we have two different encounter decks. So this is the kind of weird thing about the scenario. We have a standard encounter deck. We also have a spectral encounter deck. For Ooh. now, all of the locations are on their normal side, so we just interact with the standard encounter deck. But once locations get flipped to their spectral side, then we interact with the spectral encounter deck instead. And each encounter deck has its own discard pile, and if you're going to look at an encounter deck, you look at the one based on your location, etc. Mm -hmm. Cool in concept. We'll see how it plays out. <laughs> Indeed. All right, so we're going to go around. We're going to get some clues, and at a certain point, we're going to advance, I think. Pretty much how the scenario goes, pretty standard. Get some clues. And then the main show happens. So these ghosts rise out of the graves of this graveyard, and we're going to spawn some heretics. So I'm going to again click this button. Here they are. And four heretics have spawned on these edges of the map. The chapel crypt, the chapel addict, the gallows, and the heretic's grave. All of the front side are the same, and the back side is where they're different. Why don't we read the front side? So, it's a heretic, four fights, two of two health, three evade, monster, geist, witch, spectral, elite. That's a lot of traits. It does get plus two per investigator health, so in two player, there'd be six health. While heretic is at a non-spectral location, it gains aloof and cannot be engaged or damaged. So, basically, you just can't really do anything to it unless the location is spectral. You can also, as a free trigger ability, spend a clue to parlay and look at the heretic's other side without resolving its text. Interesting. And force effect, after it's defeated, you flip it over and you resolve the text on the other side. I have a question. I've never thought yes. about this until right now. Why is this a parlay? Good question. Uh, because you're talking to the ghost. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, the reason I ask is because it doesn't attack. Uh, tax of opportunity wouldn't happen anyway. It's not an action. So Correct. Anyway. Um, I guess if you have things that prevent you from parlaying, uh, then I don't know. Hmm. If, if Zamakono was a ghost, Alessandra could not talk to him. <laughs> it. But if if uh, Alessandra uses the parlay, I guess it counts as parlaying with an enemy, and he would get doom. Oh, interesting. Actually, that would be the case. Yes. Hmm. Anyway, edge case. Anyway, yeah, we got some more clues on the locations as well, and uh, you'll notice that the ones that had victory got more clues on them, which is also very sad. Mm -hmm. Um. But the important thing is that uh, we are now also going to get a spectral web story as, as long as, of course, as we have discovered at least three or more mementos, um, which, if you recall, are those things that we've been slowly collecting, like the 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 torn doll thing or the wisp of... I always forget their names. Wisp of Spectral Mist? Maybe that's from exactly. this one. I don't know. Yes. Um, I Okay. I always have to ask because I never can remember. Mm -hmm. How impossible is it to not have at least three it seems very difficult <laughs> so if you fail the first one you still get two two maybe, i think so okay uh, I, I feel like if you even do anything in the spec the secret name you should get one right you get at least the one where you go into walter gilman's room right, right. You get his journal yeah so like what what has to go wrong in that scenario maybe if you to... die in the first act yeah exactly. <laughs> you can only get one i guess i don't know so yeah. anyway it's very unlikely. You're basically going to get one of these. So let's read it. It's a zero-cost asset that comes directly into play, so it doesn't really matter. And it's a spell. It has an action. Investigators at your location spend between one and three clues as a group. Fight. Use this ability only to attack a geist enemy. 
You may choose to use your willpower instead of your combat for this attack. You get plus X skill value and deal plus X damage for this attack, where X is the amount of clues spent to trigger this ability. So this can range between plus one to plus three skill value and two to four damage because you can't spend zero clues, obviously. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is a way to potentially deal with the heretics. Uh, there are other uh, a couple of more enemies in here that are technically geists. Uh, for example, the Wraith and the Malevolent Spirit. Mm-hmm. But the heretics is the main way that we're using them. Hey, I wonder if we uh, remember a d- another scenario where we were given a, a story asset to deal with some enemies that couldn't be uh, damaged. Yeah, um, and I mentioned an scene is kind of a similar concept here, but I love how this gives you, you know, A, a choice between which... Uh, stat you want to use and b you can use other people's clues indeed yeah and also it deals well i guess it it doesn't necessarily matter that it deals extra damage since in undimensioned unseen they had a static amount of damage anyway but mm-hmm. like the scaling for their health kind of works better yeah um so that's good yeah. and more like undimensioned and unseen the goal of our second act is to banish as many heretics as you can we need to get them into the victory display you'll note that when they're defeated they actually don't go to the victory display because they don't have victory we resolve their backside so some extra stuff is going to need to be done to be able to do that Mm -hmm. so at this point we can flip locations over which is the only way we can engage these guys and attack them in the first place so how do we and also on the act the clues cannot be discovered from non-spectral locations so if you want to spend your clues for the spectral web asset you'll need to be able to flip them to the spectral uh side yeah i find this to be in practice a little challenging because as soon as you start flipping these because you want to go over here and get the clues which we'll see why you need to do for other reasons too in a second then they're suddenly in your face and you're like well yeah. wait a minute <laughs> like yeah for sure you can get clues down here too, uh, and they won't come get you, but eventually you need to get to these locations. Indeed. Um, all right. Well, we have to get as many as we can, of course. We should probably advance the agenda to see what happens on the agenda flip, by the way, where, uh, where this is the hangman. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, it just forces everything to be to its special side. So at this point in the scenario, everything is from the special encounter deck. And we also spawn the special watcher. And uh, shuffle the its encounter cards into the special encounter deck, as well as the special discard pile, I guess. Why is this so, guy here? <laughs> I know, right? So like this guy is just gonna chase you as well. This definitely puts a uh, uh, a bigger time clock because this guy will just kill you over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our last agenda is just that you can't flip locations back to their normal site. You just got to get as many heretics as you can. So. Question I want to ask, sure, uh, because this is an undimensioned and unseen loca- uh, scenario. Like, what do you think is like a reasonable level of success when it comes to this scenario? How many heretics you usually get? Uh, two. I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think if you can get two, you're like solid. Like that that felt good, especially if you get two and then escape without getting any trauma. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, you want to get one. One seems doable. Uh, we have to talk about like what getting the means for in a second, but I, I agree. Yeah. Like anything beyond that feels like you, things, the stars aligned a little bit more than they usually do. For sure. Uh, I have gotten three multiple times and it has felt awesome each time. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten four though. That's, a, uh, that's a, that's a feat. Mm-hmm. That's like getting all six in uh, forgotten age scenario. I can't remember the name of it. Founder beyond. Um, Founder beyond. Yeah, kind of I do feet. feel like that. The, so we, we saw that there's just two agendas, and the first one was how many? Eight. Eight and seven? Yeah. Mm. Not a lot of doom. Yeah, it's not a lot of time, especially considering that you are uh, dealing with a, a lot of other encounter cards, I think. Um, yeah. And the, the map itself, I think, is a, a big part of the scenario. So For sure. It's very it's kind of separated. It, it, it is, and like the only way to get through is this little triangle thing here yep uh let's look at the other side of some of these heretics then to see what we need to do to get let's them into the victory display all right so we uh, again you can either spend a clue to look at the other side or if you just defeat it you resolve it all right this one is a pretty standard one so uh it has some flavor text and then when you defeat it obviously you put this into your threat area and forced at the end of the round you must either choose and discard two cards in your hand or flip it back to its enemy side. So until this gets resolved, 
that's going to be happening every single round. So that's pretty tough. Oh, I, I don't Ugh. know if I remember this one. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. Uh, as an action, if you are at Heretic's Grave and it has no clues on it, you test Willpower or Combat 4. And if you see, then the ghost is banished. And then you read the little text there, which automatically just adds it to the victor display. So this one, uh, yeah, oh, God. I didn't realize that in seventh shroud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a way. So reading this again, right? So you need to bring this card, which is in your threat area. You've already defeated it through the spectral web or whatever other means. Yep. Then you move to this location, and then you have to get all of these clues all the off clues. of it. And then you need to take an action, which then you... can provoke attacks over to yeah. Exactly. From the heretic that's already here, because at this point, in order to clear off the clues, this has to be on its other side. So, hey, by Correct. the way, what's the other side say? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, the haunted effect is to reduce your base willpower to, to, to one till the end of the next turn. That's bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. yeah, we should probably just look. Oh yeah. yeah, we can. We'll go over them when we go to locations. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is pretty tough. It is nice that it is over here at least. Yeah. Because imagine if it was over here. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So notably, some of the this is this is random, right? Where there's six different ones, and there's yeah. four on the table here. Uh, this is a fairly easy one because you only need to move once. Yeah. Uh, the easiest, of course, is sometimes they pop up on the exact location that that they need to be at, or that yep. doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah. Yep. Let's look at the next one. Ah, okay. So after you defeat this, basically, it flips back to its enemy side and it makes an immediate attack. Then you have to defeat it again to actually banish it. This one is the one where it actually has a force effect where if you looked at it by resolving the Heretic's Parlay ability, aka you tried to peek at what the ability was, then you flip it back and it makes an immediate attack. So you got punished a little bit for looking at its backside. Yeah, I, I find that to be, like, much better than doing the bring it around to do its chores, basically. I agree. You just need to take some attacks, kill it twice, and you're done. Yeah. It, it kind of sucks if you're spending clues, right, to uh, to kill it, and you're like, well, I don't have any clues left. Now what? That's true. But uh, as an aside, does it bother you at all about the whole, like, this side says don't resolve <laughs> its text, and then this side has a forced ability? Are you supposed to resolve the text? Like, obviously, you're supposed to. Obviously, it's supposed to. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Like it, it's it's a it's a weird like chicken and egg thing where it's like the other the other side tells you to look at it, and then the forced ability is if you looked at it. And the thing that says without resolving its text is just reminder text to be like, yeah, if you forgot, then maybe. But you're still looking at it, and therefore the thing would trigger whatever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's just pedantic. <laughs> it doesn't make any <laughs> sense with the the yeah. intention. I don't know how they should have written it, but like whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. This one, let's see. Okay, another one where you have to keep it in your third area. The other round, you just take a damage or flip it back. So that's not so bad. Um, but you need to take this one to the gallows and you need to test willpower or agility four. Back so in this circumstance, here. that's pretty far. Yeah. That's just one, two, three moves. So that's at and least a no round. Clues on it. And you got to get the clues off, right? Yeah. Now, I in... will remind everybody. That Janae is even more busted in this scenario than before. I don't know. Because you don't need to move... get the clues. You just need to move them off. Just move the clues off, yeah. Hmm. I mean, this is a good scenario where having all the locations revealed is is nice, right? Because you can do things like deciphered reality or connect the dots. The yep. problem is you can't do those things until all the locations become spectral. Right, which requires you to at least move to them to flip them over. Mm -hmm. Or you wait until uh, the agenda advances. Exactly. I will say, uh, maybe this is a scenario where the new double card testing sprint comes pretty okay. You can investigate these four or five locations from this location. That seems mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right, so this one is a little bit further away. Uh, we also haven't mentioned that the tests that you do are varied. Yeah. They are different, yeah. pretty varied. I think most of them use willpower or at least a couple of skills. So hopefully mm -hmm. someone on your team can take care of that. Right. So if you are at the gallows, it does not mean that you need to be the one who's doing that test because it's a scenario card, right? Correct. In your threat area. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next. Ooh, this was a weird one. Okay. 
Flip this back to its enemy side. It makes an immediate attack. For the remainder of the scenario, this enemy cannot be defeated by any means. Its parlay ability can only be activated while at a spectral location, and it costs plus one clues to trigger. And then you would banish it the next time this side resolves. Basically, you have to parlay with it again. <laughs> what? Wait, okay, so... I don't think I've ever seen this one. I, I'm not really sure I've seen it either. So if you look to the side, the force ability below it... Yeah. You, you So this kind of encourages you to parlay with all of them. Yes. So basically, if you parlayed with this thing twice, it would just banish it. Mm -hmm. You just need plus player clues. Right. Yeah. So basically, it's either you kill it and then parlay with it, or you parlay with it and then parlay with it a second time each time it attacks you. Okay. Hmm. Oh, wait, no. It says the next time the side is resolved. It is banished instead. Okay. It's banished instead. Okay. So actually, the second time it's going to attack you. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, definitely the game encourages you to just spend the one, one clue. Yeah. Right? You definitely sure. Yeah. For, for all of these. And that it's kind of strange because it doesn't scale with the player count either. So, on a high player count, that's super simple. You should obviously spend a clue everywhere. For lower player counts, you're kind of like, uh, do I want to save my clue to do the damage? Because you kind of need to do that, That's true. too. Yeah. Albeit, they do have less health, obviously. Um, true, true. But I think that you're right with the scaling. There's also a lot of clues already going around. Mm -hmm. um, like, these clues on the Chapel Attic and the Chapel Crypt and stuff, They don't. you don't need to get them. You just need to get them off to be able mm -hmm. to do certain things, right? That's right. Um, and you, and you want to get these because of the victory yeah. points, but otherwise you For don't sure. have to. You know, um, I find like that's kind of the, the main crux of the scenario is is juggling this whole, like, what do I need to do and in what order do I need to do it in terms of, like, moving around the map uh, in a quote-unquote optimal way. Because it's, like, there, there, it really depends on which ones are out here, of course, but do you send someone to get the clues first? Do you have someone hold on to one of the enemies? Like, how do you deal with that? I think that depends on your team and your player count. Yeah, this one definitely requires, like, or not requires, but is definitely helped by someone who can either reliably evade the heretics, mm -hmm. so then you can just flip them over without worrying about them attacking you afterwards, or just having, like, a tank to be able to soak a lot of the attacks that are coming. And then there's the Spectral Watcher. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's look at two, yeah. All right, let's look at this one. All right, so this one's pretty standard. At the end of the round, you decide to take a horror, flip it, and you need to go to the Chapel Crypt and test intellect or combat four shovel crypt is over here these are tough tests they're i think they're all four right yeah they're all four yep i think this is probably yeah this is end of round you must either lose two resources or flip it back and you go to the chapel attic and test intellect or agility four. yeah if you don't have two resources to lose then sorry it flips back over you gotta defeat it all over again like don't Oops. like you don't want to do that right like you don't <laughs> want to uh well you can you can lose the one you got an upkeep though right uh, yes, yes, you yeah. can you can use that. So not maybe like you could basically just have no money. Yes, as long as you have two. Uh, sorry, as long as you have one. Yes, you're right. Yes, yeah. Mm. Yes, you're right. Because it's not spend. Okay, good. Correct. Yeah. Changing the game state. All right. I mean, those are the heretics. Obviously, the these four, uh, these four, and uh, this one are the ones that care about the locations. Mm -hmm. Um. And these ones are the ones that require the most variance. Like, if this one is over here, as we said, or the one that the Chapel Attic is, like, over here or something, then it's going to require a ton of turns while you're slowly losing, taking damage in horror, losing cards and resources before you eventually get there and also have to get the clues and also deal with the thing that's there and also deal with the Watcher that's coming at you. Um, that's when the scenario gets very, very bad. Um but if you if you get the ones that are like oh just parlay it twice or just kill it twice, then those ones are actually pretty straightforward to deal with. Yeah, I would say that the random thing that we just drew was pretty friendly. Yeah, we could definitely do two off this, maybe three if we if we stuck to this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. also and then we just forget about that. Also, a question of like what resources you are using. I mean, resources in general, right? To to move around the map to look at these things because like yeah. We just flip them over for fun, right? But in a real yeah. scenario, you're like, I don't know, I'll look at this one first. And then you're like, do I right. deal with this or not? Do I, the, the time that I've invested in looking at it once, do I 
then move away and then see what I have to do there. Because there isn't, I found not much time to kind of go back and say, okay, now that I know what all the locations are or what all of the uh, uh, ghosts want, now I'll start playing the scenario. <laughs> you you right. kind of have to like make some decisions in the, uh, in the moment and say like, do I, do I deal with this, this one or do I give up and move on to the next one? That's true. All right. Locations. Yeah. So every location is a normal and a spectral side. Mm -hmm. um, so let's actually start with the, the boring one. So Hangman's Brook, it just has a resign ability on it. And its spectral side also has a resign ability. But its haunted ability is you take a damage and then you cannot resign for the end of the, uh, until the end of the round. That's actually kind of <laughs> brilliant, but also mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you're investigating here, though. <laughs> no, but there's other uh, effects. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if you draw the freaking realm of torment in yep. the face, that's hilarious. Yep. All right, we got the haunted fields. Three shroud, two precludes, victory one. Each spectral enemy at haunted fields gets plus one horror value. That could be pretty nasty. It's really nasty. These guys, uh, the spectral watcher is spectral, duh, yep. and the uh, the geists are all spectral as well. And yep. they will so, move because. Uh yeah. This haunted effect is you move the nearest spectral enemy once towards haunted fields. This is honestly a good way to get them out of these locations so that your seeker can like go in and get the clues off. Yep. Um, so that, that's the way to do that. I always found this one confusing, though, because after there's already one there, you know, it doesn't do anything. You just say, right, that's the nearest <laughs> that's one. That's true. That is the nearest one. That's true. All right. We'll go over here for the abandoned chapel. Two shroud trooper clues of victory one. During the mythos phase, each investigator in abandoned chapel gets minus one to each skill. If you remember to do it, I believe. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you remember that. And its haunted effect is you basically just get another minus one till the end of the round. Mm -hmm. Um, that that one's okay. Yep. Okay. Let's look at this heretic's grave. So we got uh, seven shroud. While investigating it, add your willpower to the to your skill value for this investigation. Uh, sometimes that can help, but sometimes that is like plus two, maybe. <laughs> and I'm like that's still seven shroud. You get a free read the signs, kind of. That's true. If <laughs> if only it gave you an extra clue. Mm. Uh, and also, on its spectral side, same effect. And haunted, reduce your willpower to one till the end of the next turn. Uh, not only is next turn meaning that it could carry around to the next round through the mythos phase, holy shit. Um, but uh, yeah, that yeah. reduces your investigating power here as well, since it adds your willpower. Yeah. Diana loves this. Her base willpower is already one. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like this is unnecessary for it to be the end of your whole next turn. Like, if you fail your yeah, that first test, that's two yeah. rounds, as you said. Yep. All right. Uh, we got this version. The Gallows, it has X Shroud. X is the number of Geist enemies in play. So usually that's four. Uh, it can go lower, obviously, as you defeat the Heretics, but there might be more that pop out of the Spectral Encounter deck. Mm -hmm. And on its backside, same X. And a Haunted, discard the top three cards of the Spectral Encounter deck. If a Geist enemy is discarded by its effect, draw it. Well, it's not as bad as the other ones, I feel like. I mean, it's, it's annoying, right? right? But yep. it, at least it only would add one more to your shroud. Yep. All right, we got the Chapel Addict, four shroud. Forced, after you draw a non-weakness card from your deck while at Chapel Addict, place that card face down beneath Chapel Addict out of play. As a reaction, though, after you successfully investigate the Chapel Addict, add each card beneath it to its owner's hand. You found your stuff. This one's a cool effect. Is it a... I mean, this is four, so it's in every single card you draw. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Haunted, you discard a random card from beneath Chapel Attic. So you're going to lose your stuff. Mm. I like this. This is kind of cool. Yeah, that's neat. <laughs> you, you had to go find your stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right, and we got the Chapel Crypt, Stick Shroud. While there are no Hex Treacheries among Investigator's Threat Areas at Chapel Crypt, it gets minus three Shroud. So reminder, Hex Treacheries, those are the ones that are going to be like the uh, Punishment, uh, or I guess these ones, yeah. Um, 
racked and bedeviled, like mm-hmm, those ones mm-hmm. that either make it worse or whatever. But hopefully you can get them off you. It gets minus three shots, so that's pretty good. Haunted effect, though, is find the topmost hex and in the discard pile, and you basically draw it. Yeah, this is funny because it's the standard encounter discard pile, and there's very few things, maybe this is the only thing, that interacts with the standard encounter deck and discard pile after you've flipped over everything to be spectral. That is true. Don't put those cards away. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happened to me. I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're done with this. And then you're like, oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I like this one and as you... a lot because yeah. it actually is somewhat beneficial. It makes you like do something kind of cool. The other ones are yeah. a little bit punishing, but... And as you'll note, the heretics are witches, meaning that if you exhaust them, you can use the action abilities on mm. the things yep. successfully uh, automatically. Nice. So that's fun. We have uh, two All more right. locations. Correct. Or four uh, more. Four more. more, yes. One version, uh, one extra version of those four on the edges. So here's the Heretic's Grave version. Only four shroud this time, which is good. Forced, after a witch enemy at Heretic's Grave is defeated, discard the top two cards of the standard encounter deck. So obviously not so bad, but there are obviously cards in here that are going to care about the encounter deck running out of cards, mm-hmm. uh, as we've seen from this campaign already. What's its backside? Oh, it's oh, it's also the standard encounter deck. Um, hmm. But as the haunted, heal a damage from each heretic and each witch enemy in play. That can be annoying, if that is bad. Yeah, four shroud though, still manageable. I would take this over the seven shroud <laughs> any day. Yep. All right, this version of the gallows it gets plus one shroud for each witch enemy in play, which is actually worse than the gallows because these are also witches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at the start, it has seven trout. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, all right, same thing. Haunted, discard the top three cards, and you get a witch enemy. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this one sucks. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So this is... I- I'm wrong. There's there's more that still deals with the standard encounter. Oh, yeah. All right. I guess so. All right, next we got the Chapel Attic. It has... A shroud while investigating a chapel attic. Add the number of clues in your hand to your skill value for this investigation. Harvey loves this scenario. I love this one. This is such a great location. It's a good one. Yep. On his backside is a haunted effect. Discard a random card from your hand. Two cards instead if you have five or more cards. No, but not so bad. I mean, that's that's the, the witch or the geist that makes you do that anyway, right? Yep, that's true. All right, finally, we got our last Chapel Crypt here. We have Six Shroud. While there are no ready enemies at Chapel Crypt, it, oops, it gets pl- minus three Shroud. So uh, there's always going to be an enemy here when the thing spawns, but if you get it off, then it can get minus three Shroud, which is not going to happen because you need to go here to get the clues off. There's going to be a thing here already. <laughs> uh, so uh, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, Haunted. Uh, you spawn the top card. Gee, what the fuck? Spawn the top card of the deck face down and engage with you. It's a reanimated dead enemy with one fight, one health, one evade, one damage, and the monster trait. I've never seen this. I have never seen that either. I didn't even realize we did those token effects since, well, I guess we did it uh, last last campaign. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. Anyway, uh, those are locations. That This is wild. I, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, it is a flying polyp. Only... One yeah. health instead. Huh. Okay. I think the tough part also is like you can't just cheese these locations, um, the clues, right? Because there's four for two player. Yeah. Um, so you can't just like run in with your look what I found and say, okay, I got him. We're done. Even though the, the shrouds here are ridiculous. Not that you really want to run look what I found too much in this campaign, but Intel report. Intel report you have to put a lot more work yeah. into to get all the clues off. Yeah, I think that the scenario has an issue with variance because I feel like like, like uh, out of each of these pairs of locations, one of them is substantially worse than the other ones. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my god. Imagine if you got the four ones that are all the bad ones and you're like, I have six shroud, eight shroud, seven, seven shroud, shroud, seven shroud. And uh, yeah. there you go. I, I mean, I guess that's sort of... I hadn't really put it this way before, but like, why do they have two per clues? They really should just have one per... Yeah. Anyway, uh, that is the scenario. Right? That is the scenario. Yes. Uh, we sh- 
we obviously should talk about the resolutions as well as the encounter deck because I feel mm-hmm. okay. This is my opinion on this scenario. Sure. This scenario is like it, it's it's already hard as we've shown. This the uh, encounter deck is also very hard. Yeah. And it makes the scenario a lot harder. It really just does by itself. Uh, so I know you. Well, let's look at the re- the uh, yeah. what happens when you advance here. So this is only if you get all four copies, right? Otherwise, you should either be defeated or go resign. Correct. So I've never seen this before. You just get in. I know you get a corn husk doll. Oh, that's how you get it. Mm. Interesting. I've never got that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, this one actually just goes straight to R2. It doesn't actually give you any trauma, I think. No, it does have weird. a resolution that says something about like you survive the watcher's embrace. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, right. Yes. And that is it does check for that later on. Mm, anyway, yes. the main thing is like Undimension Unseen, you're going to record how many you did not get um in uh you record that many heretics were unleashed and x is the number of heretics enemy in play um right so you need to get one in order to get the wisp of spectral mist correct that's the bare minimum if you don't get one you know it, it actually becomes pretty difficult in about two scenarios When they check for this, and again. at the end, yeah, yeah. All right, let's look at the encounter decks. So you've organized them by these the uh, regular ones and then the spectral ones. Yeah. So on the spectral encounter deck, we have a bunch of new cards specific to this scenario. Mm-hmm. First is the Vengeful Witch, three three three. It spawns in the Gallows or Heretic's Grave, Alert and Hunter. When it's defeated, it deals its damage and horror to each investigator at its location as direct damage slash horror. Why? <laughs> God, the, this the, the fact that it spawns away from you too is like really annoying. Yeah. In most yeah. cases, right? It doesn't have to, but it goes to one of these two locations that you're probably not going to go to at the beginning yeah. of the scenario because those don't have any clues. Yeah. I hit, for me the the tough part is the defeating. It me, it basically means that if higher player counts, you need to completely separate. Mm-hmm. Which in this scenario can like actually lead to really bad things happening. So the map is tough. really small, honestly. Like it's hard to yeah. separate. Yeah. All right. We got punishment. It's a hex you put into play in your third area. Forest. After an enemy at any location is defeated, you take a damage. And then as an action test, real power, or if there's an exhausted witch, you can get it off. <laughs> any location. Wow. Yeah. Any any enemy. Yeah. Wow, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, we got the Ominous Portents. It's a peril. You must either draw the top card of the Spectral Encounter deck. It gains peril and it cannot be canceled. Or you test three world power. If you fail, take two horror. This one's honestly just kind of fine. Yeah. When we played this, I'm pretty sure we just took the willpower test every time. Yeah, because, I mean, we were both... Obviously, you as uh, uh, Carolyn could obviously heal the horror, and I'm amazing at willpower, so we could just... Basically, this does nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, we got Grave Light. So if it's drawn from the standard encounter deck, you put it into the special encounter deck and against Surge. If you draw it from the special encounter deck, you take two damage and then you put it in the discard pile. Basically, it requires two cards to draw, but you just take two damage at the end of it. Yeah. It's kind of neat because you just know it will be coming later and you still yeah. get an encounter card, so it does have Surge. Yeah. So it's not like this is a, a, a freebie for now. And then a bunch of yeah. things we've seen before. Yeah, so honestly, obviously you got more witches. Yeah, the Priest of the Coven here gets a lot tougher. Yeah, especially... Uh, yeah, that's a lot of witch enemy. Obviously, luckily, the heretics don't go to the grave... Uh, sorry, the counter discard pile. Mm-hmm. Um, but that can still be good for a bit. And obviously, you're going to be doing a lot of fighting in this scenario, so any more witches to deal with is pretty bad. I forgot this thing is a witch, so that counts as well. Yeah. So I guess this can get... To a 737? Holy crap. No, it's still max of. Oh, it's still max three. But it's more likely to get up there. Exactly. Yeah. Right. All right. And these have to do with the discard pile. And we've talked about the, uh, you know, these these guys, these hexes. um, Yeah. And then Diabolic Voices also can be really tough. Yeah. Once again, though, this scenario has actually the most witch enemies in the entire, like, as we've seen yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be, I hope at least more easy to deal with racked and bedeviled and punishment when it comes to exhausting witches yes so that's good all right 
And at some point, you are going to flip things over and start drawing enemies from this side of things. So let's yeah. look at the, the version of the Vengeful Witch, which is a Geist, which is the Malevolent Spirit. Spawns on the other two. side of the map. Spawns on the other side. Two fight, two out four evade. While it is at a spectral location, it gains Hunter and gets plus one damage value and plus one horror value. So it deals one damage and two horror. That's pretty bad. Um, and then it has the same effect as the... Uh, the wraith where or not not actually but basically if you don't defeat it by spell or relics then you just exhaust it and move it to any special location if able mm -hmm. good thing you have a spell oh yes that is true mm -hmm. which i think is actually pretty good for for these guys like the fact that everyone gets something that they could use and it's not just using your willpower is is nice Yep, it only takes one clue to get these guys off, so it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I have had them come, like, hunt over to me in the haunted fields, and then they do three horror. Oh, God. <laughs> that seems bad. Yep. All right. We got Burdens of the Past, Revelation. If there are no copies of unfinished business in your threat area, it gains Surge. So unfinished business, if you recall, is the backside of the heretics. That's what the card is called. So if you basically have no unfinished business, you just get another card. However, if you do, you trigger its forced effect as if it were the end of the round. So for all of them, you would either take a damage or take a horror. You'll lose two resources or you draw, lose two cards. Um, or you have to flip it back over. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Yeah, what do you think about that one? So, I mean, it's tough because it's so rare. Because I feel like what this card would de-incentivize is if you get a all of the unfinished businesses out, like all of them flipped over and then you deal with them one at a time. And then this one really punishes that, but you're not doing that anyway, since they're already doing things at the end of the round anyway. Exactly. So this rarely actually triggers. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. We got Bane of Living Peril. You must either choose an unfinished business card in play. You flip it to its heretic side, placing damage on it equal to half its health, or you discard cards from the top of the special encounter deck until like Geist enemy is discarded, spawn that enemy engaged with you. That first option, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Please. I beg you. I'm, t I'm like trying to transmit this to whoever drew this because it's peril. It's the same It's the same thing as the freaking card from Bounder Beyond where you're like going to flip over location. And we're like, we just spent three turns getting all the clues off. <laughs> At least it gets damage equal to half its health. It's part way <laughs> done. So. But I agree. Yeah. Like the... I mean, it's an enemy in play again, right? And it's just another guy's enemy. Just take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. We got Watcher's Grass as always, and then we got the Wraith and the Trap Spirits from this one. Uh, Wraith, as we talked about before, is a uh, guy uh, enemy that cares about spell or, spell or relics. So you do have the uh, the thing, the spectral web. So mm -hmm. you would have a way to deal with this also. Yep. Which is nice. Uh, trap Spirit. Uh, honestly, this can just kill you because yep. everything's haunted. Everything's haunted. Yep. I think All this right, here we go. got close to k killing me as Carolyn. Maybe this and, yeah, that's and the Realm of Torment. Yeah, so Realm of Torment shapes in the mist, and this one is pretty bad. Um, really bad. Yeah, like all of the haunted effects are really nasty sometimes. And there's no uh, counterplay, right? You just draw this, and you're like, well, I guess my base willpower is one. Yeah, Re Realm of Torment is a real nightmare. Um, yeah, and then we got our classics. Fatable, uh, Terror in the Night and Fatable Fools. Fatable Fools, the Doom is interesting on this one because there's only two agendas and they have relatively high Doom thresholds. So adding a Doom might actually be a viable option because most likely you're going to just resign or die anyway. Yes. So yes. it's thought. And, and Dooming out is not a big deal. If you, exactly. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Like your, your choice here is kind of interesting and you taking the two direct damage when there's already the direct damage from the vengeful witch i mean yeah ugh. taking a damage every time with this thing yeah 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 uh yeah. okay you know like honestly so I, I i like hard scenarios this one is, is quite challenging um i feel like there's just we'll talk more about this in a second but like i feel like there's like one too many things in going on in this scenario and for me if you cut the spectral watcher <laughs> I would feel a little bit better about most of this. Yeah, I think for me, if you made the locations not in incredibly variant and some of them being absolutely like wild, yeah, I think that for me would be good because I like the special watcher here because it's like thematically appropriate. Um, 
but yeah. That's true. I, I kind of sometimes wish there was a connection between the attic and the gallows somehow, just to be able to move around the map a little bit better, because otherwise you are, you're going up this way and you're like, well, I guess I need to go through here, but then there's enemies that are coming through the same way, because all of these guys have Hunter, right? Well, not the uh, Covenant Initiates, but... Um, Everyone else has Hunter, so you're you're being kind of funneled through this area, and it's really tough if you don't have uh, ways to just get the enemies off the board faster than, you know, normal. Yeah, um, I think this is uh, this is definitely a scenario of all time. Um, <laughs> I will say though, because uh, I just wanted to bring it up that uh, Luke Robinson breaks this scenario, which is obviously not saying much, but I think he breaks it more than was intended to break it um based on the movement or based on disengaging from enemies or... um a couple things so the one thing that i always think of is that if he's in his gate box uh i guess like could he choose to flip it over <laughs> that's the question um what would happen mm, because enemies can't in enter the gate box is that actually what i always i always forget what it actually says um is it about entering or because they can't spawn there, obviously, either. Yeah, I think it's that they can't enter. I don't know if this counts as entering. Good question. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Enemies and investigators other than Luke Robinson cannot enter Dreamcade. Interesting. Okay, so that would be a way to get an enemy there, then. Yeah. Well, then all you got to do is just leave it there, and then it, the location goes away. <laughs> and then you just get rid of them and say, I don't need that victory point. Just That's true. Now it's they gone. would actually get, in, in theory, they actually get... Um, set aside right because yeah. it's a scenario card and mm -hmm. it doesn't have an encounter card back that's yep. weird would that count as oh god all right all right <laughs> <laughs> uh we can we can have a special section which is the the janae Beauregard and the luke robinson section of our reviews oh my god <laughs> um yeah I, I, again there's like there's definitely ways to to tech some of this like i think you could throw up like a barricade or something that might help. Um, it, but the one thing you can't really tech for is what the other side, what locations there are and what the other side of these, these uh, guys are. Yeah. Which is kind of your point about like the variance here being a bit out of control. Um, I, I mean, yeah, it, it's just that I've found that the enemies, like you can't really get far away from the enemies because everything is more just like one extra location away right yeah so you're incentivized to move back so if you're here and you're moving down here well this guy's already come up and catch with you catch up to you then you're like now what how do i get through all this mess yeah the special watcher could definitely um force a lot of choke points to be yep. really annoying so yeah all right uh we'll, we'll talk about this more formally in a sec all right as we always do we start with a discussion about replayability, which I value quite highly. Although you know, even you know, on your for your first run through a campaign, it should be good then too. But I think there's a lot of variability. Clearly, we've been talking about that for a while. I don't know if that is a good kind of variability. The replayability of like, oh well, which ghost are we gonna get this time? Is not particularly exciting to me. Yeah, I think I basically agree. Um, the variance, it ultimately doesn't, the only thing that the variance affects is how difficult the scenario is. It doesn't make it any more interesting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, I don't know if there's really much else that is different on each playthrough. Yeah. It kind of just feels like you're going in and like, I think the scenario ultimately the, like the, the goal or whatever is to kind of just go in and be like, expect the worst to happen and then if something doesn't bad bad doesn't happen you're like okay we actually got to do pretty all right um but yeah the resignability on the initial location whose bright idea was this anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah so i think with that in mind i think i'm gonna give it a th I'll, I'll give it a 3.5 because like i i do rate scenarios like this slightly higher under playability than base arkham because Obviously, the goal of the scenario is to get as many as possible, and so there's always a level of replayability with, like, how many can we get kind of thing. Um, and obviously, as we said, there is var variance when it comes to locations and the heretics, mm -hmm. um, but not as interesting as it could be. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. Like, there is something cool about, like, the push-your-luck uh, 
scenarios and, and and i think that all of them as you say are, are better than you know at the base level arkham yeah you know i i, I you've convinced me on that i, I think 3.5 is appropriate for this scenario it's it there's there's a lot better ones that that make the <laughs> scenarios replayable in an enjoyable way and i think 3.5 is 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 fair okay speaking of fairness does yeah. the challenge create interesting and meaningful decisions for the players? Okay, so like I, I briefly brought this up before where I think there's kind of this interesting tension of like how do you get the clues off while the uh, heretics are there without, you know, failing all of your actions and triggering honor effects? Like there, there's something there. Yeah, there's definitely something. Um, <laughs> I think, again, there's there's not there's very little ways to mitigate the randomness though like yep if you are stuck with those bad locations and the heretics that require you to go across the entire map then you are just screwed and you just can't you just have to deal with that yeah how do other scenarios deal with this problem right like how do they i mean i i, I get that they're turning the challenge up a bit but how do other scenarios that have the kind of random spawning of of things deal with this problem a good question. I don't know if any scenario in particular, because the thing about the heretics is that they are a set of enemies that are randomly spawned, obviously, but require different victory conditions that you don't know until halfway through dealing with them, aka defeating them once, mm -hmm. um, or looking at their backside, right? And so inherently, there's an amount of randomness tied to that if the backside depending on what the backside is and the range of effects that it can have. For this scenario in particular, the range of effects can be like, oh, we just need to defeat it again. Or, oh, we need to spend four rounds moving it from over here, <laughs> getting all the clues off, to passing this test, which is not an easy test, and oh, make sure that the one who defeated the enemy is like the right person so they can move it over. Yeah. All the while, that one person is discarding two cards in their hand every single round. So like, you know... So they revisited this concept in the Scarlet Keys. Yes. And then we're not going to review that here. Uh, it's a little bit different where I think it's it, it's not quite as, um, like, do you say different victory conditions? Like, I think it's all pretty much the same idea, even though there's yeah. some randomness. Uh, so that, I think, is was better. That one was better because, if I recall, because it's been a while since I played this scenario, I've only played it once, mm -hmm. it... All of them were like the all of the locations say do this one thing. Remember that you've done this, mm -hmm. and then every enemy on whatever backside or whatever. If you've done this, then you're done with this thing. It's right, over, right? Right. And so there were enough of those that you like you knew already existed as victory conditions. Like for this one, you have no idea if the gallows is the one you're going to need to go to to get the clues off, right? Um, whereas in the other one, there were like six locations or whatever, and like you had to do at least four of them or something like that. Yeah, I don't know exactly yeah. the exact number. I think it was three. Um, I think it was exactly half. You just didn't know. Yeah. You could waste your time doing all of them, I guess. This is Shades right. of Suffering, by the way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think I like that better. It, that scenario yeah. has its own other things going on, but as far as the concept of like do the, the thing on the other side of the card, you don't know what it is, they probably needed to limit themselves a little more about what those kinds of things were going to be to eliminate the, the variance. Like, if yeah. they were all maybe do something on the next location, like go to a connecting location and do something, then right. that would be fine. Yeah, that does seem more reasonable. Um, okay, so with that in mind, I think I'm going to give the fairness at a... I'm going to give it as a two. Uh, I think that it's pretty unfair. Yeah. We didn't really ask the second question of applying appropriate pressure. I think it, it the pressure here from the doom clock is okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're just going to die <laughs> more likely yeah. if you're trying to stick it out long enough. Um, I, so like, I don't, I, I think I give it low marks on that one for the encounter deck pressure. Like it's, it, well, mostly it's the spectral watcher. I mean, I'm just going to, it's an easy <laughs> answer, I know, but I feel like it doesn't need that to be here. Uh, two is fine. I think it's fair. It's it, it that's a fair rating for this. I it, we've seen worse ones. I think actually, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I I don't think there's like so many cheap shots 
uh, in this one. It's really like you look at it and you say, I don't think I'm going to play the rest of this part of the scenario. Bye. There's always a way out, right? That's true. Okay. Unless you draw the... Uh, you go, you move to the, uh, the resign location at the end of your turn, and then you draw the Realm of Torment, and then you can't resign. Right. Classic. Balance. I think this one's pretty balanced in terms of yeah. what everyone can contribute. Like, you definitely yeah. need and or would like someone who could evade. But you can you can kill things, and they give you an opportunity to use pretty much a variety of stats. Yeah, I think that if, if anything, this scenario is much more balanced than, for example, Undimensioned Unseen, uh, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, because of the way that the Spectral Web Asset uh, works, you can pretty much have anyone be effective at uh, dealing with the geist enemies by either spending clues or dealing damage it's slash both um and i feel like this scenario really encourages like teamwork and it encourages like different things going on so like someone who can't evade as you said or someone who can tank a lot um is going to be effective in this scenario so if anything it like pushes out the kind of archetypes that are useful in this scenario um so yeah i think it's pretty balanced um you like know, go you ahead. Know, I think that uh, ideally, like it's kind of fun to think through how you can do well in this scenario. You know, pull a parallel Ashcan Pete deck out and drop traps and barricades yeah. and and whatnot. I think that that's that could be interesting and fun. I, I I just wish it was a little bit less on the the variance to make that more enjoyable in general. Sure. Um, okay, so I think we're balanced. I'm going to put it at a four. Um, yeah. It's one of those scenarios where it's like, it is balanced by the fact that most everyone is not going to have a great time. <laughs> so Fair. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm feeling really generous. I'm going to give it a four and a half because I feel like there's a lot of things that are maybe underplayed strategies that could help out here in theory. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm gonna be the connect the dot stand again and say like, yeah, this, you can do a lot with those high shroud locations, right? You get a, a printed good. nine or eight or whatever it was, and then you can get them off the the seven shroud. Seems like it's good. Yeah. All right. Last one is the experience, and here's where I then break with <laughs> the previous generous. <laughs> uh, you know, the the fiction's good. Like you're in a graveyard, I suppose. There's these haunted spirits that are coming out, and you're trying to, you know finished their last request. I like the flavor text on all of those. There was like my bones or something. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Yeah, I like again, as you talked about at the beginning, the story of why you're here doesn't really make any sense. It's oh. like, <laughs> oh yeah, we we thought that there would be ghosts here and that could be potentially helpful, I guess, because Kezio is a ghost, I guess. Um and ultimately, I don't even know if this like obviously the whisker torn sh the torn shadow like does something, but it's not like it's completely relevant to the story at all. Um, well, but the, the whole like number of heretics unleashed upon Arkham only matters later, right? Right, exactly. It's like oh yeah, we went here to preemptively figure that out. I yeah, that, I don't understand that either. Yeah, um, and so it's like kind of okay, and then yeah, like the 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 flavor of the locations are cool. Like I like the idea that. Um, you have these like relics from, I mean, it literally is called um, the wages of sin, right? So it's like, like, what did we do to these witches in order for this place to get haunted this badly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I like the, that kind of flavor. I like that, as, as I said before, I like the, the, the flavor of the locations, like the chapel attic where you lose your card, you can get them back. Um, but yeah, I like, I, th I think it's, it has a cool aesthetic to it. Um, I guess maybe the first bullet point is is where you were going with yeah what maybe not as good yeah yeah I mean I just don't think I there's a little bit of like the doing chores part of this uh, scenario that that is annoying right I, I yeah. don't think they've they've had done this before where it's like bring thing from one location to the other. And I'm not sure that that it it doesn't end up being that fun in this in this scenario. I can imagine it being kind of a, a neat thing to do, but not with the like the punishing part of like oh if you don't get there quickly enough you'll be losing more resources or cards or 
damage or horror. Yeah, honestly, I feel like, you know what, this is a way to fix this scenario. If they just didn't have those end of round effects, I think that the scenario would be a lot more straightforward. Like, you still have to go somewhere and do something, but, mm-hmm. like, at least it's not causing you to die every turn. <laughs> yeah, you're not juggling that source of pain right. on top of everything else, right? Right. And then you can still have cards that, like, if there's a thing in your third area, you have to take a damage or horror or flip it over and stuff like that, right? So, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it still works. Yeah, that that would... I would like to see what that, how that would play. I agree. It's okay. one of those things about like scenarios, especially ones that uh, if you're playing at a lower player count, uh, just, just these sort of scenario effects that always happen, right? Like the enemies are spawned by the campaign, but also you by the scenario, but you also draw enemies from the encounter decks, and then the spectral watcher. Like so, I feel like I've not played this in four player. Um, I know you have, but I feel like that lessens itself a little bit because someone can do some of these tasks and someone else can do the other ones and that probably is a little more fun of divvying up what needs to be done uh but when i played this in two or th- well three is okay but like when i played this in, in two it just feels a little uh, a little much yeah i think ultimately it has the issue where a lot of those things you need to do are just inconceivable for a smaller and smaller group um I, I've never played this in true solo. I imagine it's a nightmare because um, you're like, oh, yeah, these two stats I need to test for this thing. I just don't have those. I guess we're leaving this one behind. Um, which I guess is true for most of them, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I admit that that is probably not ideal <laughs> when it comes to scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, time to for, take out the actual rating. Yeah. Um, I like the atmosphere of this scenario. I really like the vibe. On my blind playthrough, we had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um we were able to get three of them actually on my blind playthrough, which is insane. Wow. Um, and that was because we got the one that had to damage itself, and then one of them was on its location. Um, so we were able to get those pretty quickly. Again, variants. Yeah. So with th- with that in mind, I think I'm gonna give it a three point five. Yes, I I basically I admit if people don't have a high rating of the scenario, I'm not gonna josh it for it. Mm-hmm. I- I'm gonna go with three. I think okay. three three is kind of where I feel about the experience like there's so many things that i, I kind of wish were better <laughs> it, it i don't I, I think since i've played it more often especially since we played it last year yeah i'm i'm higher on this scenario because I, maybe i've experienced more of the variants where it doesn't feel quite as bad or it feels a little more doable and you're like okay i think we can actually get this done and that that's cool i like that in arkham uh, but then i've also played where you're like well what was I supposed to do? What <laughs> right. did you want me to do scenario? Right? Like, yeah. And that feels bad. And that's part of the experience, I think too. That's fair. All right. Sounds good. We will return with the return to version of the scenario in just a minute. Otherwise we will see you in the next video, which is for the greater good, where we go to the silver twilight lodge. And that one's going to be a, a good time to talk about too, because lots of, of uh, differences between the different parts of that scenario. So hold on real quick. We'll set up the return to, otherwise we'll see you later. All right. Yep, we're good. So this one requires a little bit of discussion about what happened in the first scenario, right? With Aaron? Yeah, in the first scenario, um, there was a possibility that Aaron wants to meet. Uh, There was an additional act in the first scenario that required is it one plus player? Yeah. One plus player, which enemies to be exhausted in the witch's circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Aaron will want to meet. If Aaron wants to meet, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a special setup with the act deck. We're also going to have an additional. Uh, no, we're going to have. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to have a different act deck. So um, let's look at this new one. So we have just like a reminder card here. Um this first act card is a uh, return to act card. So the front is the same. Um, but after spending your three per clues, basically all it does is it puts Aaron McCoy, McCoy uh, into play in the haunted fields, basically under no one's control. Um, and then it uh, puts both act, act two way and the original act two way into play. So you now have two separate objectives that you could go for. Um, and also the return to is a special, new one um also you'll notice on this one 
Um, there's no restriction for how many mementos discovered. You just get the special web asset, which again, most likely didn't even matter to begin with. But yeah. I guess now it doesn't even need to check for it. Want to know something else that's weird? You add two per player clues to each location, which is in the old one. You don't do that for all of them. Each location. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So there's extra Originally... clues in, in this version. Originally, it's just one per on the, I think, Haunted Fields, Hangman's Brook, and Abandoned Chapel. Oh, interesting. So the each location here is every location, not those four listed? <sighs> I mean, that's oh God, not what it said. The, the original one says different text, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It says, uh, add two to each of those, add one to each other. Yeah. Oh, God. English, please. Like, why didn't they just oh. copy that over? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, maybe because you need the extra clues in this one, because you do need some extra clues. So maybe that's why. That's true. That's true. The problem is that yeah. that makes getting the victory points a little harder. <laughs> it does indeed. Uh, anyway. All right. And let's talk about the additional one. I guess, well, we don't need to bring Aaron, Aaron out, but we'll we'll talk about her. Sure. Um, so this new act, uh, Aaron wants to learn more about the ghosts. So. When you would banish a ghost, you may instead place it beneath Aaron McCoy, heretic side, face up. As an action, if you are at her location, you spend one per clues to parlay, choose a heretic beneath her, and place it beneath this act. Objective. You need to get three of them beneath the act. That is a tall ordeal. Um, yep. So not only do you need to banish them, but you need to be at her location and spend an extra one per clues to get it underneath the act to be able to actually do this. Uh, and what happens and you if you don't them. what happens if you don't get three yeah so that's the thing right is that it says it's heretic side face up so the question is are those heretics in play i guess they are which is weird because they're not actually enemies because you can't hit them um, i mean they're not in the victory display either so you don't get any victory points for them right um so I think the question, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you don't get you don't get victory for them. Um, the question is for the resolution because it checks if each heretic enemy in play. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you basically get zero? Uh, you get all the heretics are unleashed. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is sort of another one of those. I love the return to Circle Undone for like the encounter set design, honestly. But there's a bunch of little buggy things, and this one yeah. is just like, hmm. Like, I I, I I would never do this because, A, if you don't get three, you get nothing. And why would you do yeah. that? Yeah. And B, like, yeah, you get all, every all of them have been unleashed under Arkham. Yeah. I, I, if, if we're assuming that them being face up underneath Aaron McCoy means that they are quote unquote in play. Yeah. Um, they would be. But again, it's an enemy, but it's not an enemy, right? So it's like, it's kind of weird that, to me, it implies that it wouldn't be in play, quote unquote. Um, so I don't know. Uh, wait. So what? What does the original resolution say? It's how many are not in play, or how many are in play? X is the number of heretic enemies in play. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't I mean, check if they're individual play, right? So no, it doesn't. You're right. Uh, I don't know. You could house rule that to whatever makes sense i think i would just give myself the victory points if i were going for this and didn't make it to three but mm, yeah. let's look at aaron actually like is this even worth doing yeah so uh yeah as you said you go to r3 and at r3 uh you record that one heretic because you did three of them obviously mm -hmm. you get a new memento and then yeah aaron can join your party so here she is where is she there she is Aaron McCoy, Devoted Enchantress. She's a two-cost asset that takes up the ally slot. She's an ally in Witch. She uses three secrets. You get plus one willpower. Reaction, when you draw a non-weakness curse or power treachery, spend a secret and exhaust Aaron McCoy. Cancel that card's revelation effect. I mean, it is a good effect. It's good. Um, it's really good it in the good. last two scenarios of this uh, campaign, for sure. Yep. And, uh... Diana Stanley, after spending that third one, can just tuck it underneath her if she wanted. <laughs> sure. That was a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's worth it's... it for one card in your deck, though. No, I guess not. Um, not really, I guess. 
Aaron joined the investigators. Yeah. It does matter in um, scenario six also. Like there's a way to end the campaign early. Yeah. Does that require Aaron to join? I think so, right? I, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. That is the other way to do that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. okay. Like, sure. It's here for a little bit more story paths, I guess. But, I, you know, I, I just wish they, I don't I'm kind of surprised this campaign has been out for what? Three years, four years. Since the return to yeah, I think um I think again like the idea of this earning Aaron by doing an extra thing I think it's cool mm-hmm. um I think that like it's not as balanced as it could be like um it should be a thing where it's on the way like maybe yeah. if this had a uh, clue threshold that you could spend if X number of unfinished businesses are in the victor's play for example yeah um and then it's like if there's at least three you spend three per clues and then you are done right um instead of continuing with the pursuit of living for example so yeah yeah I, I there's ways to fix this i think that they could have done a better job like qaing this but um, it's interesting because, the idea of it is cool yeah i i agree it's interesting because like other return to sort of introduce some other cool story ally have made it uh i don't know much more part of the normal way of playing the game so I'm thinking of in, in uh, the Forgotten Age with when you get Veda Whitsley. It's yep. it's just another uh, act to do in Threads of Fate. And she's really good. <laughs> she's incredible, yep. really. Uh, but not too um, onerous to do. Like, you're not ignoring the overall idea, uh, conceit of the scenario. The other one in Dunwich is, uh, what's her name? Naomi? What's her uh, face? Obanion? Oh, Naomi Obanion, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's <laughs> awesome, but doesn't come into play until later which is <laughs> yeah annoying but yeah. and also of course with naomi like you need to be able to rescue uh what's his face peter yeah. from the peter clover yeah so like it's already a challenge to get her to begin with yeah um once again so basically what i was trying to reiterate is that i think that the idea of earning aaron if you're able to do something special in this scenario is the right idea i think that it's just too hard because not only do you need to get three uh, a bunch of exhausted witches in the first scenario to be able to do this to begin with, but also you need to give up the benefits of this of this scenario too. Mm-hmm. Like, like again, it like they could have easily have it so it's like either just an extra resolution where it's like, oh, if you got at least three, you get to earn her because getting three already is already really hard, right? Yep, it's already really hard. So like, it's it's even more hard. Anyway, what else is different about this scenario? Yeah, so we actually have a new version of Hangman's Brook in addition to the other locations that you randomly select from. So this one, uh, it's the same resign ability. The haunted ability is place a clue from the supply on Hangman's Brook. Why? Right, because there's a new uh, there's a new heretic which I, care, I think cares about Hangman's Brook. Yeah, Ooh. so this one. Uh, it's the same thing, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the round, you must discard an asset you control or flip it back over, and you need to go to Hangman's Brook, and it has no clues on it. Test a skill of your choice five. To <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, okay, I mean, I think this is interesting that, like, if it coincides with this version of Hangman's Brook. Exactly. Are, are you supposed to use this one, or is it, you said it's random, right? It is random. Okay, well. So you might get this thing, you might get the other version, etc. Hmm. You must but it does an asset you control. Come on, yeah, that's pretty tough. <laughs> Just curb yeah. yourself every every round. Yep. All right, what else we have? We got a new one. So this one, you keep it in a threat area at the start of the enemy phase. So importantly, not the end of the round. If the spectral watcher is in play, ready it. Okay, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Um, as an action, evade. Use only on the spectral watcher. Use your lowest skill for this evasion attempt. <laughs> if you succeed, this ghost is banished. Excuse me? <laughs> wow. That's tough. What's the special watchers evade? Uh, three? Three? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah, three. Did you do this one as Daisy? I might have. I actually don't remember. God, it's it's, it's been a while. Um, well, it wasn't as Leo, that's for sure. It was not as Leo. I mean, I, that already would have been his lowest stat anyway. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah, these are tough. But I do like that these ones at least don't require you to move across to the 
the other side of the map. Yes. In theory. Yes. So that's nice. Yeah. If they were all, all six of them were, or eight of them, I guess now, kind of like this, it might be kind exactly. of fun. Yeah. And also, like, the force effect on this one is not so bad because usually that's just, it's already going to be ready anyway. So if you didn't evade it, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Um, you know what we didn't do before? Oh, sorry. Are there are there any, are there any other changes? Uh, we got some other encounter cards. Uh, okay. Just these two, actually. Okay. Which we peril if it's drawn from the standard encounter deck, put into the spectral. If it's drawn from the spectral. You trigger each haunted ability on your location twice. You may give Witchweed Surge to place it in the standard encounter discard pile. Wow. Hmm. That could be bad. <laughs> you know we didn't really talk about we had to, we talked about a lot of things but we've kind of forgot to talk about just the idea of a spectral versus um standard encounter deck in in the main part of our review i wish yeah. they did more with it in the regular version and we kind of was surprised to see that there were a few other effects that i didn't remember but i do kind of feel like after the agenda flips you're like well the standard encounter deck bye and some of the things that might happen are kind of lost this is interesting right because if you draw it from the spectral encounter deck you can give it surge to make sure you don't draw this again basically yeah that's true that is true i wish they did more like that there there's a few things in there like of course you, you still care about the uh uh evil past i think is the one in the original that cares about the center encounter deck going through no actually you don't yeah. care about that one too much right because it's unlikely to to deck out that is true anyway all right i mean there, there, there's there's some cool ideas there and i think they do a few things here as well um that's it all the other cards are, are old i think the screeching banshee here is scary but at least we, we do have, have a spell though we do a spell but it's three. It is three uh, health compared to the the guys in the original. Okay. Uh, oh, we also didn't talk about the the tokens. Oops. Yes, I am now reminded of that. Shall we quickly do that? Yeah. All right. Minus X. X is one higher than the number of copies of unfinished business in the victor's play. So one to four. Not so bad. Cultist minus three until the end of the round. Each heretic enemy in play gets plus one fight and plus one evade. That's not even if you fail. So watch out for that. <laughs> Uh, okay. tablet. Oh god, the tablet. <laughs> right, you just trigger the end of the round for stability. Um, yeesh. Yeah, that could be bad. Yeah. Uh, tablet is if you accept your fate, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, elder thing minus two if you fail in this attack. Is this is an attack or evasion attempt? Resolve each haunted ability on your location. Minus two is not so bad that usually you're not going to fail that. So that's pretty okay. I think. Yeah, I think that one's fine. It. it... Yeah. And if so, you're attacking or evading, you're hopefully at least two up. So Yes, yes. You should be able to, to be able to do that. What's on the hard side? Uh, not fail. If you <laughs> fail, trigger force. No minus four. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just more one. numbers. The last, last one is fail. just it happens no matter what. Yep. That can be pretty bad. Hmm. All right. Oh, the skulls are revealed in their token. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. A uh, number of copies. So it actually starts at zero, I guess. All right. Um, the return to, I just feel like it needs a, it needed like a few more minutes in the oven. Yeah, I, I agree. But otherwise, I like the added uh, unfinished business. Or uh, I like the idea of Aaron. I wanted to try her sometime. I've never earned her before. Yeah, I, I remember when I played this and I, I had her out there. We we're just like sitting there and saying, "Do we really want to do this?" Yeah. <laughs> and our answer was no, because like the Doing the uh, Banishing Heretics was hard enough. Ooh, you know what it should have been? Uh, the scenario one, in order to get her to show up, that Aaron wants to meet, mm -hmm. that should not be a prerequisite for her to show up, but rather it would make it easier for you to accomplish your goal in this scenario. Ooh. The more, like, the more exhausted witches there were. Or something, I don't know. Okay, okay. I like that. Maybe you don't have to spend the clues. You just have to go talk to her three times. Right. You still do the hair test, though, I guess. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Uh, I guess that is it for now. So we'll talk to you again in the next video. See ya.